Hi all, let's have a look at round three of Leela Chass in the TCEC season 13. This against this is against the Tucano 7.05 chess engine. So on one of the rating lists, this version seven was in the top 50. So maybe 7.05 is a good improvement, but it's on a 43 core infrastructure. So not a bad uh, CPU support in this game. Can Leela with just two graphics cards uh, do well against it? D4 from Leela. The set book is just two moves here. The Slav, solid Slav, very respectable. Now, <clears throat> pardon me. Leela, just, Leela chooses Knight F3 and then takes on D5. This is, I believe, a, a favorite of Mikhail Botvinnik. Uh, this system, the Exchange Slav. So Knight C3, Knight C6. Bishop f4, Bishop f5. Yes, it's like we're watching a World Chess Championship game. <laughs> this is exactly what I'd expect from a World Chess Championship game. Queen b3, Bishop b4, Knight e5. Uh, Queen e7. We have some pressure on c6, but uh, Black just defends that. This position, uh, it's difficult for White to prove an edge here. a3. In chess based live book, by the way, castling has been seen this position where knight e2 but it's no no big deal it's nothing really to write home about this position it's equal ish so a3 we see bishop going back and you might think there's a little bit of excitement here because of that c5 square uh, so Lila tries to exchange off queens to kind of weaken black and get some dynamic play black's not having any of it black just castles on queen takes b4, we can see that the rooks activated. This didn't happen. And maybe, maybe white can have a small edge here, potentially. Uh, but we see castling. Queens come off. Knight a4. So you might think, okay, this is a backward pawn. c5, there's knight. Take c5, protecting the bishop, by the way. So there's something to play for here, surely. Knight c5. This is a transition of that backward pawn now to something else, uh, structural change. At first sight, okay, I was checking the live stream of this game. It looked as though to me, intuitively, if white can play, well, later on I joined, when the b5 break, uh, which is kind of evident here, becomes more evident. So b4, rook b8, king b2, g5, f3, Bishop c8, and we go into a rook and pawn ending, which there's an expression, all rook and pawn endings are drawn. h4, now black plays g takes h4. There is a way, it seems, for black to actually lose this or get a, a bad position. If black actually, um, sorry, if black actually didn't play g takes, which seems, in, in, in one respect, I must admit, it looks as though it's offering fragmentation, pawn fragmentation. But if black does h6, this is, I think, the worst choice of the major choices because this position with e4 is dangerous for black. If white could use the h file, there would actually be some real and imminent dangers in the position here with the lockdown of black's king side. Um, this is very dangerous. So I think this is actually very good uh, in a technical sense. Uh, so we have rook h1, e4. And this again, intuitively, I, I'm thinking the king can use d4 and b5, but this is just a pipe dream, really. It's the cold shower of brute forces thrown all over this plan because black undermines the queen side and has really good rook activity here. However, this is really interesting now. Things are spiced up. Lila goes for the c6 pawn, allowing this check and the king goes into the position so a bit of excitement actually king plunges into the position and now there's an idea that maybe the c pawn could be more dangerous or even mating nets around the king rook takes rook d h1 it looks as though this is a really aggressive king is lila onto something the evaluation of tukano was just zero all the time uh, throughout most of this by the way but uh, Lila was saying at many stages, plus two around here. Very optimistic. And I was getting slightly concerned Lila might push too hard like she did in the World Championship game and eventually lose on time. But in that format, there was a manual operator. So apparently the time manager of Lila is, is pretty, pretty good. And it's an increment time control as well. 
uh, I think 10 second increments or something. So, so as long as the time manager is automated, uh, Leela did try her luck here. On rook a1, you might think, well, why not rook a1 in this position? Is, is there something exciting going on here with this really aggressive king? Because visually, it does seem it's got ingredients of being visually crushing. I mean, it looks a little bit visually crushing with, with the aggressive king. But here, you know, black's always got king g8 now. And if it takes e3 and black holds the balance, this position, black's just holding the balance. Uh, white would be forced, Lila would be forced to go into perpetual check scenario uh, so there's still nothing to really write home about here so we see this strange move uh, rookie free another strange move like almost waiting as though black's gonna make a mistake but it should be noted apparently there's no table basis so maybe maybe it's it's kind of idea sometimes if an engine could crack under time pressure to try and cause a mistake but technically it looks as though this black's always got enough resources here King g8 is played. Uh, so rook a3, I think in this position, um, I suspect there's rook f8, but actually don't trust me on that. Let's just look at the game continuation. Rook a3, because I haven't actually made a note of that, I'm sorry. <laughs> so king f8 was played here. Uh, rook goes to h3 over there, rook a to h3, and now there, rook b3, the rook swings again. And yeah, I'm gonna be going into Benny Hill modes soon. Now here is a nice little trap. <laughs> if taking, the, not not there, because then king g8, but no, there's a, there's a stronger move there. Rook h8 chat mate. So Alina's kept her sense of humor here with rook b2, rook g3, check. Rook h1, rook h4, rook h8, rook h7, rook h6, e3. And this is a bit caused a bit of a stir. Why, why e3? Uh, maybe token o is is uh, is concerned also about the 50 move rule and wants to play for a win or something. I, I don't know. So check this pawn is actually uh, in trouble here. Black didn't play. Uh, d4 in this position I, I think it might be too dangerous because of rook here uh, for example if, if black defends then this can be pushed back that's that's totally winning for example like this so th there are some dangers uh, some little traps to avoid um so yeah we we see the move rook g7 so this did seem like a pointless exercise essentially losing a pawn and i'm afraid <laughs> i'm gonna have to be going into benny hill mode soon because now yes uh okay the rooks are kept on that pawn's not taken there uh instead i think this is another little trap of some sort anyway uh F6 check does seem to win the rook on E7. Little little traps being set by both sides. Well, not intentionally. I mean, engines don't play for traps. But anyway, King F6 check. Rook H1, King F6, and now, yes, yeah, the C pawn. There's an interest in the C pawn. Leader grabs the C pawn, uh, and now going behind that D pawn. Lila really does try for a win to her credit in every single game but this could be like flogging a dead horse dead horse here uh so yeah even the deep pawns taken so we're equal on pawns here but now this phase of the game it looks as though nothing's really going on i'm fast forwarding for you uh did you know the average YouTube video attention span is less than 10 minutes? So that's why I'm fast forwarding because I'm sure most of you are not too interested in me dragging on the analysis on this position. So I'm just showing you this game for completeness in round three. So the next game, by the way, is 12, what, what, about 1, 1 p.m. UK time or less. 
that check the CCEC site. So here there's a load of checks. And uh, okay, drawn. So to make up for this game, I've got another exciting game to show you, not from the tournament, but <laughs> yeah, it was drawn here. But I just wanted to show you this for the record. Lila really did try in round three. Uh, I'm glad that the time manager is working properly. So she was getting close, it seemed, to losing on time, but our, our displays weren't in, to in total synchronization. So when you see that on the on the TCEC site, don't panic. Uh, so it's it's assurance anyway, at least that this game Lila is not going to easily lose on time. Apparently, uh, an, another neural network engine did lose apparently on time trying to push a rook and pawn inning. So very good news here, really, for round three. Lila's leading the tournament here, two and a half out of three. Go Lila, go. Okay, comments, questions, like, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.